What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We are up in Delaware. We're going to be doing a little bit of racing this weekend. Got Camaro here. We're going to do some maintenance on it. But huge shout out to today's video sponsor, Policy Genius. Did you know that one of the easiest ways to save money is by reshopping your home and auto insurance policies? If your home or auto insurance policy is up for renewal, or maybe your rates have gone up from a claim or something like that, let Policy Genius do the work to find you a lower rate. Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need, and getting started is easy. First, head to policygenius.com slash Dr. Tunamal and answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Policy Genius will show you price estimates for policies that fit your needs and help you find the best option. Their team of experts will look for ways to save you more money, and especially when you bundle your home and auto policies. The Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies. If they find a better rate than what you're paying now, they'll switch you over for free. Policy Genius has saved customers an average of $1,250 per year from what they were paying on their home and auto insurance before. All right, guys, to potentially start saving right now, head on over to policygenius.com slash Dr. Tunamall. Link down in the description. Head on over there. Hopefully start saving some money. All right, guys, so one of the things to add into the car before getting it ready is a set of some low dollar shock sensors. So if you've seen the last couple videos with this car, you can see that it was just extending the back really fast. So we're gonna do a couple things to try to fix that. Uh, and on top of that, we're gonna finally have some shock data to see what they're actually doing. But we're gonna ditch this weight bar. It's gonna go back in the car, get us a little bit more leverage. We're gonna reballast our weight percent, make a couple more adjustments, but we'll show you guys what we're doing as we're going. All right guys, so this low dollar kit comes with these nuts here. Make it real easy to put shock sensors on your car. Got some titanium shock bolts on this thing because you know, it's got to fit the car. It's a little bougie. All right guys, shock sensors are in. They are wired up. We're working on the front. Got the one strut off right now. Andrew's working on trying to get that spring compressed again. But we went ahead and put these adjusters on versus what was on there before because we had to actually get like something small in there and try to like swipe it, which was a real pain on this car. So that'll be an easy way for us to make some adjustments with the front shocks and uh, get this thing a little bit more consistent going down the track. I did just talk to Jack Stan about an hour ago and his flight got canceled. So he's not gonna get here until about 12.15 tonight. So we're gonna get the car ready and uh, we'll go meet up with him later tonight, get him from the airport. All right, guys, shock sensors are installed. Just got to get the wiring done. And we should be ready to set this thing down and uh, rescale the car. So we're going to start moving some weight around. And uh, what, are we want, what are we shooting for? 54%, 55%-ish? Five. Okay, cool. Got our little shock knobs in. So now we can do some quick adjustments. And, uh, yeah, hopefully that works a lot better than it was. All right, guys, at the airport, about to head out, meet up with Tudemol. Boys up there already got the car on the lift, checked it out, uh, added a few data points, some shock travel sensors, all stuff like that. About to get on the plane, see them guys in a couple hours, and uh, give you an update on the car. We got uh, testing qualifying Friday and racing Saturday. Racing for a Wally, so that's pretty exciting. But yeah, about to leave here and uh, see you guys in a few. Just talked to Jack Stan. He is at the airport about to fly out. So uh, he'll be here later tonight. We're gonna have to find something to do in the meantime. I heard there's some slot machines around here. Might have to go play a little slots, but we'll see. Shock sensors are getting in. Uh, they're all mounted up. Andrew's gonna do some wiring. And then we have to wait for James to get here before we can actually scale the car. Uh, Cause we need him and none of us are anywhere near his weight, so he's actually got to be here so we can set it up. Fluffy! We're, we're all a little bit fluffy, and we had some pizza earlier, so we outweigh him just a little bit. Alright guys, we got us a little Delaware rainstorm, holy, guys, it is 
pouring. I can barely hear it in here. It's so loud. Shoot! It's a little wet out there. So what I'm going to do is once Andrew gets these shocks mounted up, I don't know if you guys can hear me. Hopefully you can. Once he gets this wiring stuff done, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to set up, how to set up shock sensors in the Holly. simmering down a little bit now guys one other thing that I had forgot we were gonna do is actually wire up the dump valve on this transmission so when it gets hot and greasy and stuff like that we can actually dump some of the uh, fluid out of the converter and loosen it on the hit so we'll be playing with that a little bit I don't know if we'll play with this weekend but we are gonna be playing with that a little bit so we can try and get this car this car used to 60 foot 105 you know, consistent 107s and with the new combo and a new transmission converter everything, we haven't been able to get it back to that. So we're making a couple changes. We're going to try and get there. But that's just one more tool that we can use to try to get that 60 foot back, especially get down in the heat of the day when it's real tricky. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to set up some shock sensors in your Holly EFI system. So we're going to go to the front shocks here. Um, you're going to start, obviously, with knowing which pin that you just went to. So you'll go to configure after you've labeled it. Um, these low dollar deals, um, they come with some instructions. They're a little bit kind of vague. Um, so what I've done here is I go to custom five volt. I type in my units as inch. And then this sensor is zero to eight inches. So depending on which sensor you got, the fronts on these are zero to eight. The rear is zero to 10. So you're gonna set this side to zero, this side to eight. Now I have done something just playing a little bit with these. So we'll just set it up the normal way. So you're gonna go zero on the bottom here to five volts and you'll go ahead and highlight it. Right click, fill row values. And then up here, you're gonna have eight inches, I'm sorry, eight inches at your five volts, zero at zero. And you'll do the same thing, highlight, fill row values. So you're gonna go ahead and repeat that. Go ahead and repeat that for all your shocks depending on what they are um, as i said before the rears are a 10 inch so those are set up the exact same way but as 10 inch sensor so you can see there zero to 10 zero to 10 and that gives us our shock travel so we got gonzo over here in the corner he's going to unhook one of the sensors and then we will go ahead and watch it on our screen go ahead So you see it traveling up and down right there, front left. So that's all the way out. Right go there. go all the way out. Yeah. So front left, we just, I need to swap them on the pins because that one shows yeah. front left. And that's all the way in. All the way in zero inches. So the other thing we could do at ride height that we did notice was I can actually go in, once you kind of figure out ride height, if you just want to show kind of how much travel from its actual resting point. You can take and look at it, see, okay, the car's sitting here at say three inch ride height. You can go in and see where you're at. So three inch would be two volts. You can start the table at two volts and zero the sensor out if you want to do it that way. And then that would just show you how much travel it actually has from its resting point ride height. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and swap the two pins actually I've already done it so I'll just show you how to do it if you need to know you should already know but you just move them around so you got to be offline to do that but once it's offline you can just switch these two pins around so these two are backwards I just swapped them around real quick and we're gonna go ahead and test it again and see all right Gonzo I'm ready when you are so now we should have front right shock eight inch and then all the way in zero inches Cool. Working like it's supposed to. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll test the rears also, make sure those are right, and then we should be good to go on the shot. All right guys, so gonna go ahead and... All right, go ahead and check. Which one are you on? I'm on uh, right. All right, so we gotta swap that one around too. Go ahead and pull it all the way out. It's all the way out. I mean, push it all the way in. Zero inches, cool. So it's working right, I just gotta swap the pins. All right, guys, so like I said before, if you have them backwards like that, um, these were installed a long time ago, so we just got to 
move it up here out of the way and we'll move that one up put this one down here and boom problem solved go ahead and send that go ahead and stay down there we'll just test it to make sure we got a cycle our ignition ignition cycled all right go ahead there you go now it's correct 10 inches all the way out and zero inches all the way in perfect all right guys so we've done a couple other things so we have a little bit more control while james is in the car so right now the car set up we've got five different nitrous tunes right here on this rotary dial the other thing we just did is this switch on the dash i don't know if you can see it there's a virtual switch to the left and a virtual switch just there to the right so basically what those are going to do is if the track is you know not too good you can hit this switch right here that's going to put a two degree timing retard on the starting line so when that is enabled it will put two degrees as soon as he lets go of the button and the nitro starts counting it's going to pull two degrees put it back in this one right here when it's active it's going to enable the dump valve so you can see there virtual switch on that activates the, the dump valve so we'll go ahead and turn those both on I don't believe the timing is going to work just because we have it on the nitrous, but we can show you guys the dump valve. So we'll go ahead and activate it. Dump valve worked. So we'll go ahead and you can shut the throttle. We'll pull up a data log and show you guys what that looks like. Well, I already have this up, so I'll go ahead and show you. This is our timing uh, retard for the starting line. So that's set up. Starting line retard is how I have it labeled. And then in our inputs i'm sorry our outputs we have the dump out set up so it's going to be pwm and basically when we go wide open throttle trans brake is pushed when he lets go of it it starts at 100 percent and ramps back in just to loosen up the converter on the starting line just a little bit all right so got the data log pulled up you can see here where trans brake is enabled let me uh let me zoom out a little bit all right so Red line, trans brake, and then you can see here, this line right here is the starting line retard, and that counts with timing going up. The blue line is going to be our dump valve. So the reason the timing looks like that is because I set it off TPS just so you guys can kind of see how it works in the data log. And then the blue line is gonna be our dump valve. So as you let go of the trans brake, dump valve comes in, dump starts dumping fluid immediately and then starts to ramp it back in. So we will have to play with that to see if we can get it to kind of work. That's going to obviously take some time, um, but emergency circumstance, everything is now set up. So everything will work. So we got shock sensors. Now we got our timing retard and some dump action on the virtual switches also paired with five different nitrous tune-ups. So we can look at the track. We obviously won't be able to make a suspension adjustment immediately, but we're hoping we can get the suspension close enough where if we need to make a little bit of power management adjustment on the starting line while he's in the car, we can do that. All right, guys. So a lot of you guys ask, who owns this car? Andrew Gonzo is the actual owner of this beautiful Camaro, but James is the hired gun. He's the one driving it, and then I'm helping with tuning and stuff like that. So, Andrew, give me a rundown on this car. You bought this car brand new off the showroom floor, correct? Brand new showroom floor, November 27, 2001. It's a 2002 uh, G28. Uh, a few years back, decided to start racing Ultra. First year had a 408 on nitrous. Uh, wasn't what we needed. I went with uh, Tony Bischoff at BES Racing Engines. He built a 440, masked, Moses headed, cannon valve. Uh, motor's been through a couple different versions. Made it more nitrous friendly. Got a handle on it now. Uh, recently changed it to a 465 and went car or EFI from carburetor. Uh, never looked back, Holly EFI. Uh, chassis has always been done by Ron Rhodes, Road Custom Auto. Uh, Mensor Motorsports rear, sand tough front shocks, TBM brakes all around, um, RPM transmissions, you know, teamed up with some of the best of the best in the industry and uh, looking for some uh, good progress. Yeah, so it's got a RPM built three-speed turbo 400. You've got a Marilot nine-inch rear in the back. Yep. Uh, what gear's in this car? 
I believe it's a 430 right now. Okay. And we twist this car, what RPM? We can go up 9,000, 9,500 if we need to. Uh, made power on the engine dyno all the way up to 96. It uh, starts to get a little sketchy and, you know, trying to keep it keep it alive. Yeah, so. Trying to get parts right now, right. so. That kind of RPM, too, wears out valve train, wears out valve springs. Uh, initially, when we started messing with this car, we had a rocker issue. What we kind of figured out to be coming off of the burnout three-step yep. and with that big old throttle body on there the rpm would just zing up super super fast with an unloaded valve train and it would snap your intake rocker off Plus the intake rocker right off of the yeah so i don't know if you guys remember this when we were at lights out i believe um it actually happened and broke the rocker and almost came through the valve cover so when that happened that was down in bradenton and it actually broke the intake rocker, puddled up full of fuel, and pulled it into the following cylinder and lifted the ringland off the piston. So this thing is very, very rowdy. That motor made how much? 1080, I believe you said? That's 1080 on motor, on, yeah. the, on Bischoff's engine dyno. No nitrous. The old motor in this combo went 820s to the quarter, you said? 820s NA. NA, yeah, no Without nitrous. The nitrous on, it went 820s to the quarter, doing uh, some you know license passes sketchy track and it was even uh, <laughs> a little bit scarier there was march up here in delaware so cold. a little cold yeah so this car is fully capable of going deep into the 50s at ultra weight we just got to get we got to get our stuff together and get it to 60 foot once that 60 foot is there this thing's gonna go really Put fast we've been uh, 40 no 58 or 59 down in bradenton with it 58 with a one yeah, Braden. and that was with, a, I believe, like a 110 or a 111 60 foot. I don't think it was that yeah, fast. 111, yeah. Like that. So if we can get back into the 105 to 107 area, this thing should go 50s, no problem at all. So that's our goal for the weekend. But we're going to end the video off there. We're going to head out, get some dinner, and then go pick up Jackson from the airport since he wants to show up super late to the party. So once he's here, we'll get over here tomorrow, get him in the car, get it scaled, get all the weights pushed around. Get this thing back in the box and we're going to head to the track. So I appreciate you guys watching. As always, stay tuned and we'll see you tomorrow.